Good day, uh, and thank you for that very kind introduction. Uh, it is certainly my dream job, but I don't really have to fight quite hard, so I'm very pleased to be here. Um, so, uh, I guess I wanted to start by saying that walking into the gallery here is uh, a bit of a sensory overload uh, in terms of the beautiful, beautiful pieces of art that are around here in all the different forms. And I think that's really fitting because to me, and maybe I'm biased having spent my childhood in Mount Cook and the Mackenzie, but I feel like the landscapes there are a sensory overload as well. So top work to the artists for evoking the things that I personally love and I'm sure you will do too about the wild places. So um, there's two reasons why it's so important for me to be here today um, and why it's such a privilege to be asked to come along and, and talk. Um, and one of those I've touched on, which is my childhood. So I'm a Southland girl um, at heart, but I spent my childhood in both Mountford Village and um, after we'd done our time there, moved to the bustling metropolis of Twizel, um, which I'm sure the Twizel residents will appreciate. And uh, I guess part of that, that um, childhood had led to the, the, the rivers and the landscapes becoming kind of indelibly inked on my soul, if you like, and probably the reason that I ended up in Kaki in the long run. Um, in terms of braided rivers, I guess everybody in this room knows how special they are. Um, but certainly for New Zealand, they're incredibly special. These are globally rare ecosystems, and in fact, only found in a handful of places around the world. Uh, and our ones are even more special again, simply because of the um, unique nature of the species that live there. Um, these places, our braided rivers, support hundreds of species, many, many, many threatened species. So I could probably do my job just on braided rivers alone and it would keep me in full-time employment. And uh, I suppose the braided rivers have somehow stayed a little bit under the landscape because when we think about a place that supports hundreds of species and threatened species, we tend to think about the bush. And yet here we have an ecosystem that just as importantly drives um, a number of very important flora and fauna, and yet we drive past it and blink and sometimes miss it. So I'm very grateful to um, be here today with a community that understands that these places are crucially important, not just um, for our threatened species, and um, at last count New Zealand had 985 threatened species with a further 2,700 at risk. So we have the dubious honour of being the number one worst country in the world for threatened species in terms of proportion we have. Um, and many of them live on braided rivers. The, the threats that our braided rivers face are many and complex. And you know we, we all know about the weeds and the predators and the water extraction and gravel extraction, the disturbance and the bogans and the four-wheel drives. Um, but I don't know that we've thought about the major threat, and I think it's particular to this ecosystem, and that is a bit of apathy, a bit of lack of love, and lack of care, and something that it's really urgent that we address. And certainly, there are many people in this room who've been addressing that for a long time, uh, and just glancing around and seeing the, the various members of various groups and individuals who've been fighting for braided rivers. I think that tonight marks the start of a new awareness for Braided Rivers where we can perhaps take it to the wider public. And um, in terms of the, the difficulty around telling the story of a, a, an ecosystem that is so globally threatened, full of wildlife, but so, <laughs> equally as nationally and therefore globally threatened, uh, is the difficulty in harnessing the story of such a complex and moving landscape. So it's really easy to talk about a single species like a kakapo. It's very easy to talk about uh, an ecosystem like beech forest. It's very difficult to talk about a dynamic system like a braided river that moves across a landscape and changes on a daily basis. And the threats it faces aren't often as visual as, um, let's say, something like a mine. They might be far, far more insidious. In fact, I think that the threats to braided rivers are essentially death by a thousand cuts. And therefore, the 
importance of raising the awareness of why they're so special to us becomes even more urgent. Um, and the only way, really, because of that complexity, to tell the story of Brad Rivers, in my mind, is through art. Because it's very, very difficult to sit down next to someone at the pub and give them the one liner on why Brad Rivers are so important. But an image, like some of the images you see around us, a sculpture, a photograph, can immediately tell that story in a matter of seconds. So I think that this is a very fitting event for an ecosystem that dearly means that love. Uh, in terms of raising awareness and um, perhaps some, a little bit of resource for khaki or a black stilt, that's actually crucial as well because, well, when I was a kid, of course, we always had the black stilt Avery down the road and, and 30 something years have gone past and it's still pretty dire for them. The, the thing about the black stilt is, <laughs> apart from, as uh, my ranger colleagues told me, that they are perfectly designed for a Canterbury icon with black, um, a black body, red legs, mm -hmm. and a red beak, <laughs> that any rugby team should be happy to sponsor them. Um, they, they are an iconic species the same way that perhaps um, a kakapo is or a, a Maori dolphin is. I suspect we just haven't tuned in to look at these long, graceful, uh, long-legged, graceful and some, somewhat very special birds. And the great thing about having a bird like the black stem, so endangered, just 77 adults remaining at, at last count. Um, now let's just put that in perspective. Kākāpō, which we were all very, very nervous about, had 125 adults and just had 37 chicks. So 77 adults makes this even more frightening. <laughs> and therefore even more important for us all to tell the story. Um, it's also a bird that you can drive down the road and see from the side of your car. Now there are not many threatened species in New Zealand or the world where you get the chance to take your kids to see something so special. So I'm hoping that, um, that the result of this very fantastic event, the, the art that's going to adorn all of your walls, presumably, since everybody will be bidding like that, to take a piece of this evocative ecosystem and landscape home, will start a story that gets us thinking about braided rivers and the wildlife that lives there in the same way that we perhaps think about our forests um, or our mountains. Thank you.